Now, it is indeed my pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning. In some respects, she's a druggist. Not really. <laughs> but uh, she's more a healer, so to speak. <laughs> um, so it is indeed my great pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning, practitioner Jennifer Livingston. Good morning, friends. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so I've retired, OK? So former druggist is a good description for me. <laughs> So let me, let me just get this in order so that I can see clearly. Um, I just want to add my own words of welcome to all of you, and especially to those tuned in to our service this morning on the World Wide Web. I want to also thank Vance for his guided meditation and affirmative prayer of oneness to set the stage for this morning's talk. Friends, have you ever found yourself wanting to participate in one of the classes offered here at the temple, but timing just never seemed right? Have you? Well, I have come to accept that it is not necessarily always about the timing, but more in keeping with what often, of that often quoted axiom which says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. This is what happened to me when I decided to participate this past April in the course Shortcut to a Miracle, facilitated by Reverend John Scott, and based on the book by the same name by Michael and Elizabeth Rann. This was not the first time the program was being offered, and in addition, Carl, my husband, was also taking the course. So usually, I tend to not be in the same class with him, but I was ready this time. So I simply said, no, I'll get my own book, and off I went, and I'm certainly glad I did. This matter of whether they are everyday miracles, or everyday a miracle, has had me pondering if they are not just one and the same. And perhaps when the televangelist of old, like the late Oral Roberts, which I could remember as a child, I would always hear him say, make the statement, expect a miracle. What was all this talk about concerning miracles? You see, friends, we live in a world where every day is indeed a miracle. As we go to sleep at night, Confident that we will wake up every day, in the, we'll wake up in the morning, our bodies pass through various sleep cycles from the stages of non-REM to the REM, which is rapid eye movement, and back again. During the stage of deep sleep, human growth hormones are released and restores the muscles and the body from the stresses of the day and our immune system uh, itself uh, is restored itself. And when we are fully rested, or we are perhaps disturbed, our bodies miraculously awaken, and we become fully present to our surrounding once again, usually just around daylight. So while the body is a wonderful example of every day a miracle, the kinds of miracles I want to focus our attention on is the everyday miracles, which is defined by the authors in Shortcut to a Miracle as those wondrous and unexpected events that occurs when marvelous things happen in someone's life. Can you relate to such experiences? You see, Almost, although most of us don't often realize it, we live in a world of miracles. We also live in a world of natural law and order. The same laws which produce the natural order 
also produce what most people call miracles. In our science of mind teaching, this is the law of mind in action. And it must be consciously used if it is to produce a definite result. Just as the laws of nature have neither feeling, sentiment, or emotions, the law of mind, like all other laws in nature, is always impersonal. We work with these laws through our thinking, and oftentimes our thinking may, may be limited, so we do not get the desired results as we may need to change our deeply ingrained thought patterns and habits. In Shortcut to a Miracle, the authors call it the law of co-creation, which states that one, consciousness manifests, and two, dominant thoughts prevail. This idea of us being co-creators of our world is also reinforced in the book, Working with the Law, by Raymond Hollywell. This was also taught here as a science of mind class as well. And in the chapter, Working the Law, Hollywell states, the law does not question or challenge the kind of picture we give to it. It only knows that it must take what is offered or planted and then proceed to materialize it into a visible form. As we assimilate in mind these ideas or mental pictures, we knowingly or unknowingly exercise a power to produce them. Hollywell goes on further to state, we cannot picture thoughts of poverty, failure, dis-ease, and doubt, and expect in return to enjoy wealth, success, health, and courage, end quote. This creative principle, my friends, is summarized in the passage of scripture in Proverbs 23 and verse 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As we continue to explore this matter of everyday miracles, it is key that we realize, as the authors of the book points out, that the most important person in your world is you. Not your spouse, or your parents, or your children, or your friends, but you. And what this means in terms of miracles is simply this. One, you are the thinker in your life. Two, you are the participator in your world. Three, you are the co-creators of the things that happen to you. And fourthly, you are already wired for miracles. So if what you're currently looking at don't look like what you want, or the miracles that you are hoping to see manifest in your world, you need to remember that miracles don't come about by chance, or they don't come about because we are nice people, and they also don't come about because we want them desperately, as was in the case in this doctor's office. Reform drug is here. Dr. Bloom, who was known for miraculous cures for arthritis, had a waiting room full of people when a little old lady completely bent over in half shuffled in slowly, leaning on her cane. When her turn came, she went into the doctor's office and amazingly emerged within half an hour, walking completely erect with her head held high. A woman in the waiting room who had seen all this walked up to the little old lady and said, it's a miracle you walked in bent in half and now you're walking erect. What did that doctor do? She answered, miracle? What miracle? He gave me a longer cane. <laughs> 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 
the miracles we are seeking won't necessarily come from a longer cane. The miracles we want come about because of consciousness. What exactly is this consciousness? Even if we already know what it is, as good students of the science of mind, it is worth expanding further. Our consciousness is the entire mental field encompassing all the intentions, thoughts, feelings, emotions, and experiences, waking and sleeping, subconscious or conscious or, and subconscious, that we have ever had or experienced. Thus, all that we have ever been or ever will be comes to us only through our own minds. This mind functions at two levels. That is, our conscious or objective mind, which is the choosing, selecting, initiating phase of our mind, which receives it, it, its directives from the outer world, the world of the five senses, while the subconscious or subjective mind is the producing phase of our mind and our personal use of the universal creative power or infinite intelligence. This brings into our experience the dominant thoughts, the desires, and beliefs held in our subjective minds. Friends, we also state clearly as one of the tenets in our declarations of principle, and I will state it here for you. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thoughts and acts upon it." End of quote. Always the creative power makes no judgment. It simply responds to whatever demand is placed upon it by our subjective mind, which is operating at the level of our own consciousness. Thus, we should make sure that as co-creators with this creative power of the universe, we are always in harmony with the law. This co-creative process operates through what the authors of the Shortcut to a Miracle calls one law of belief. That is your belief system and how this is impacting your ability to create miracles in your world. For the most part, we are oftentimes holding on to limiting beliefs, some of which has come up with us from childhood. Remember what you believe you will receive. And our belief system is, though limiting, is what we believe to be true. So it is very often hard for us to change this. And while our belief systems in all areas of our lives may not be limiting, we, so we may experience good health, for example, but struggle with our finances, it is necessary for us to change our limited beliefs if we want to bring good things into our lives. Dr. Ernest Holmes, founder of this teaching, The Science of Mind, in his book, Can We Talk to God, states, and I quote, there must be a conscious belief on the part of those seeking to demonstrate this principle that their faith and thought are but the avenues through which the law expresses itself to them." End quote. Indeed, if we are to experience everyday miracles, we must do, as I mentioned at the outset, what the televangelist would say, and that is expect a miracle. This it, the authors call the law of expectancy. This is what we truly expect to have happen. This expectancy is primarily in our conscious minds, 
Thus, we can choose to change it because we are consciously in touch with it and have control over it. An example of which was shared with me this past week and was featured on TVJ's Mile Jamaica. Don't know if any of you saw it. And it was about an advanced math program that was undertaken by a high school classmate of mine, Darren Fraser, at Excelsior to teach third form students, or grade nine, CSEC math, and have them take the exams. Now this is the exam for formers take. And while the students consciously put in the work, I know they had to have had the expectancy that they would be successful at this level. Because sure enough, they had a 98% success rate from 54 or 55 students who sat the exams and the one student who didn't pass, his parents had pulled him from the program prematurely. We live in a world of infinite potential and this potentiality is never limited by past experience. What this means is that your miracle is never limited by the fact that it has never happened before. Principle knows no precedent. All the good that we are capable of experiencing, we must first believe that we are worthy of it, and secondly, we must expect to receive it. Eric Butterworth, in his book, Spiritual Economics, states that many persons mistakenly start with the perspective of inadequacy and insufficiency, and thus they simply become more conscious of limitations." End quote. Friends, once we do our part with the law of belief and the law of expectancy, then the law of attraction immediately and automatically comes into operation. Whatever we believe and whatever we expect begins to be attracted into our lives. This is what determines the makeup of our present experiences. Law of attraction is like a magnet and it brings into our lives the right people, the right situations, and the right information to make our lives unfold in perfect right order even when it seems to be functioning otherwise. So let us affirm together. I will read it once and then you can say after me. Within me is a power which is able to meet any situation I encounter. There is nothing to fear. All that I need is within me now. So I'll break it down. Within me is a power which is able to meet any situation I encounter. Together. Within me is a power which is able to meet any situation I encounter. There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. All that I need is within me now. And that is the truth. Right. In my own experience, since taking this class, I have had several miracle experiences, and one of which was going on vacations in Canada in August, and my sister bought the ticket. And what was going to be a routine visit to help her get settled into her new condo turns out to be an all-expenses coach tour across Canada, visiting Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec taking in the historical sites and included touring the 1976 Olympic Stadium in Montreal, where Donald Quarry, if you recall, got the silver in the 200 meters. Then the tour guide, discovering I was Jamaican, <laughs> was thrilled to have me in the group. Then, no, the people on the tour started calling me Miss Jamaica. <laughs> Friends, <laughs> that was the highlight of my trip. But I, I could pass, don't you think? Yeah. After all, after all, I'm saying, I'm just saying. But then, since my return, 
you know, after that wonderful vacation, I had to do a medical imaging examination. And I was uncertain of how much this test would cost and whether or not the health card was going to cover it. But as you leave all things to the law, it always works. Friends, I ended up paying 50% of the total cost. And when I took the results back to my GP, she calls the lab owner and she says, um, I am, have questions about the report. And he says to her, well, I want to do the examination myself. So send her back. There I go, getting the same procedure done a second time, the very next day at no cost, and these tests actually cost $24,000 each. So these are only two of my own personal examples. Um, and those things that seem so serendipitous are the normal operations of the law of attraction. But I'm not the only person in the class who has had miraculous things happen. I have permission, and I know Lauren is going to hook me up, to share with you from our own Judith Dare, who I asked to send me this in her own voice note, and I'll now ask Lauren to play it for you. She was also a, a student Dear in the Reverend class. John, I have to share this with you. As you know, I've been putting out positive thoughts to increase my income, and of course, be happy and fulfilled. So here I am in Mobe, gave out my car to be washed and walked across to Witte Plaza to see my friends at their coffee shop and restaurant. When my friend comes in, he said, I can't believe this. He says, Holly and I was just speaking about you and we were wondering if you would relocate to Mobe and manage our shop. Ah, Reverend John, universe at work. So I went back last weekend and I start work on the 1st of August. The teaching of the temple is just fantastic. Miracles do happen. Thank you, my dearest Reverend John. Wow. Well, thank you. So if you're wondering what, where it has happened to our beloved Judy Dare, my floral angel, one of them, who we have been missing, she is in Montego Bay managing the coffee shop and she says to give you all her love and she misses us, just as how we miss her. Yes. Friends, and there are others too who have had their own share of miracles. If we want miracles, we need to make certain that the energy of our thought is always in congruence with what we say we want and not with what we don't want. If we want to change our lives, we need to change our expectancy. And to do that, we must change our belief system. And in order to do so, bottom line is we need to change our thinking. We all know the name of that program at the prison ministry run by Reverend John and Reverend Michael. Change your thinking, change your life, and how successful it has been since we started this program. Yes, we can all enjoy everyday miracles or making every day a miracle when we work to develop our attitude, knowing that our miracle is possible and there is no big or small. We deserve miracles in our lives, and we play a major role in the unfolding of these miracles in accordance with universal law. The authors of Shortcut to a Miracle reminds us of the importance of letting go of negativity, complaining, blaming, and criticism of self or others. We must also let go of fear, and focus on what we want. Being very clear, always expecting the best and opening our minds to all possibilities. Do the prayer work, our affirmative prayers, and they remind us to pray as often as needed. So today, if you're desirous of having a miracle in any area of your life, perhaps in the area of health, 
accept and know that health is our natural state. So see yourself healthy. And if the miracle you want is in the area of success, make sure you have a positive attitude and love what you do, or at least enjoy doing it. For those of us who may be seeking miracles in prosperity, remember that there is one source, but many channels, and the source is always providing for us. Know that you are worthy and deserving of your prosperity. And if the miracle you seek is in the area of relationships, then see the relationship not as it is, but as you would want it to be. And remember, as we change our consciousness, the relationship will change. Throughout the process of co-creating your miracles, remember to love yourself, appreciate yourself, and be gentle with yourself. You may recall that Reverend John shared with us in his encouragement last week this affirmation, and he said, the only thing that limits us is the edge of our imagination. Let nothing or no one limit the unfolding of your miracle as long as you stay focused on what you want rather than on what you don't want your miracle is on the way and may be closer than you think and in closing i want to leave you with a story and it's from the prologue in the book which is usually at the beginning and the book, of course, is available in the bookshop, free advertising. Shameless. A shameless. And it goes like this. In his wonderful little classic, Acres of Diamonds, Russell H. Conwell tells the story of a Persian farmer named Ali Hafed. Ali was a very contented man until one day when a Buddhist priest visited him. The Buddhist priest told Ali all about diamonds. He told him how diamonds were formed from deposits deep within the molten activity of the earth. He told him how valuable they were. Most exciting of all, he said that if Ali Hafed had even one very large diamond, he could purchase the entire country. And with a whole mine of diamonds, he and his family would be wealthy and powerful beyond measure. Ali Hafed was no longer happy. He lay awake all night thinking about diamonds. In the morning, he awoke early and went to see the priest once again. He told the priest he wanted to find diamonds, and so they discussed the most likely places where diamonds might be found. Ali Hafed sold his land, and with the money he received, he set off to find diamonds. He traveled and searched fruitlessly throughout the world. Before too long, all his money was gone. Finally, tired and discouraged, he came to the Pillars of Hercules, where he threw himself into the incoming tide and was never seen again. Meanwhile, a camel belonging to the new owner of Ali's farm accidentally unearthed a black rock with a bright eye of light. The new owner thought it was a very pretty rock and put it on his mantle. And one day, the same Buddhist priest visited him and saw the black rock with the flash of light. Here is a diamond, he cried out. Ali Hafed, has Ali Hafed returned? When the new owner explained, it was merely a stone from the yard. The together, they ran outside and dug into the white sand where they found other large, magnificent gems. This is the true story of the discovery of the diamond mine of Golconda, considered to be the most magnificent diamond mine in history. Ali Hafed did not have to search the world for diamonds. Right where he was, there were many, many diamonds. They were already his. End of story. Friends, you do not have to search the world for miracles. Right where you are, there are many, many miracles 
they are already yours by right of consciousness. Namaste.